trees. Let's write some data definitions for trees, make some trees, process some trees. And this is going to be a straight up classic uh, follow the design recipe. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to talk about family trees. Okay, so in particular, I'm going to call these ancestor trees. We're going to keep track of a person and their ancestor. So this is like from me upward. This is not from a, uh, a very deep ancestor going downward and getting all my cousins. This is going to be a, uh, just going upward for now. So um, we have uh, people, we have information about people, and then we have their parents. And, perhaps information about them. Eventually, we don't have information about them. So I have an example here. We have uh, Bart Simpson, born in 1979 and has brown eyes. And we know their parents, Marge and Homer, and so on. So Marge, okay, her mother is Jackie, um, with certain information, eye color and, and all that. We know that. Uh, however, maybe we don't know Jackie's parents. You know, at some point you have people you don't know about. Maybe I just haven't watched enough Simpsons episodes. I'm not quite sure. But uh, And Marge, uh, maybe we don't know who her father is. Okay. So, okay. How can we go ahead and represent this information? How are we going to represent each person here? Well, let's go ahead and try to represent Bart. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we, well, we want a struct that's going to have the name and the birth year and the eye color. Okay, that sounds good. Define struct. And then what else will we know about Bart? Oh, we have two more fields. The mother's family tree and the father's family tree. Okay, so define struct. And let's try this. We're going to run into a little glitch here, but let's just try this. So I'm going to have to define struct. I'll call this thing the struct a child because this is something that has parents. Okay, so define struct child is going to have a name and a year of birth and an eye color, and a mother's family tree, and a father's family tree. Okay, so I'm gonna have these, um, these five fields here. One of the types of all these things, uh, name is gonna be a string, year of birth will be a, a number, eye color, maybe I'll use a symbol, that's a natural racket thing, or I could use a, a color object or a string, but we'll go with a symbol for that. Uh, and then Ma and Pa are going to be, again, more family trees here. So, gosh, let's go ahead. I'm, I'm going to come back and fill in, type in the actual type. So let's actually make an example. Let's go ahead and make um, make an example of, I'm going to maybe start uh, not with Bart, but with uh, Marge. Define. So let me just go ahead and make child Marge. Uh, year of birth, 1956. Um, eye color, uh, blue, tick blue. Mother's family side, we'll, so we'll put in for Jackie here. And what is this going to be? This is going to be another make child. Jackie, and we'll, I'll come back in a second. But now here's the glitch. What do we put for Marge's father? Um... Gosh, and in fact, we're going to get the same problem when we get into Jackie. What do we put for her? We can have her birth year and her eye color. But what do we put for Jackie's mother and Jackie's father? Oh, I need more. I can't use a struct because I don't know those five fields. Um, sometimes people want to make a, a struct at a sixth field that's a Boolean saying, hey, uh, are all the other five fields valid? That's bad design. You shouldn't. If you have a struct with certain fields, you should be using those fields. And if you have an object that doesn't have those fields, you shouldn't represent it using that data type. It's the wrong data type to represent something that doesn't have fields. Don't use a struct with those fields. So uh, <clears throat> this sounds a little bit like uh, our linked lists. Um, and what is the solution going to be? Ah, an ancestor tree is either make child of uh, a string and a integer and a symbol and ah, an entire other ancestor tree. 
Okay. Um, and what else can an ancestor tree be? We're going to need some sort of base case, something to represent a person whom we don't know anything. You know, Jackie's parents, we know they exist, we just don't know who they are. So we'll go ahead, I'll use the symbol tick unknown. A lot of people will jump in and say use null or use the empty list. Yeah, I could use that. I could use 17 if I wanted to. Anything that's not a child struct will be enough to differentiate these two types of ancestor trees for me. So uh, we'll go ahead and use uh, tick unknown to represent the entire unknown family tree. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and fill in the tick unknown here. Copy and paste that. Uh, for both Jackie's parents and for Marge's parents. This is kind of a big one. We should probably make a smaller example. I should probably just start with, well, what's the first example of an ancestor tree besides this one? Quote unknown. Yeah, tick unknown. Uh, always give a smart, smart aleck answer when you can. So we're going to go ahead and have our data definition here. An ancestor tree is that. We'll do the defined struct child and this sort of, Again, this is where I match up the types with the fields, as long as you specify both somehow in a reasonable way, we're good. And then examples of data, tick unknown. And I think actually I can go ahead and reveal what I've already typed here. I'm going to go and use the version that was already typed in case I had typos. So we have examples of ancestor trees, unknown, Jackie, Marge, whose mother is Jackie and father is unknown. Uh, you can go ahead and make more. In fact, you can probably go ahead and give names to these. Would, you, would it be too confusing if I named the, the struct here that happened to just contain the string Jackie inside of it? Would you mind if I named that struct Jackie? Uh, hopefully not. Uh, so define Jackie to be this whole struct. So we'll sort of we'll have the racket identifiers, Jackie, Marge, Bart, and we'll, those will be strings inside there, coincidentally. But, okay, so yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Um, <clears throat> and I have that later in the file. Go ahead and write the template for that follows this data definition. Okay, so seriously, pause. Pause the video. No, pause. And now write the, the template for any function handling a ancestor tree. Okay, unpausing. Uh, again, just follow the steps of that design recipe. So, hey, we have a union type with two branches. Let's have a con with two branches. Um, if one of those branches is child struct, hey, pull out the fields of the ch child struct. Ask yourself what types they are. Um, hey, if one of the types happens to be itself ancestor tree, and we have this recursive reference here between ancestor tree and the type we're defining, yeah, put a recursive call in at that natural point. So uh, we should have this as the template. Ask if, and any question here, this is, are you the symbol tick unknown? Really any question that distinguishes between a child struct and tick unknown will be good enough. So, okay, um, sounds good. This is a template for any function handling an ancestor tree. Go ahead and write the function size. Takes in an ancestor tree, returns how many childs it contains. Childs? Yeah, I guess so in programming terms. Uh, so the size of the tree. So the empty tree will have size zero. And Jackie would have size, yeah, let's do some test cases here. Unknown, size zero. Jackie, size one. Uh, size of a tree that has Marge, and then Jackie on one side and unknown on the other, or Jackie's, yeah, okay, well that will be, let's see, one for Marge, and then Jackie's size, we already knew that was one, and the unknown, we already know that that's zero, so one plus that one plus that zero. So, okay. Um, great. 
can you go ahead and write the code for size? Go ahead and pause and see if you can write the code. Remember, the size of the ancestor tree is going to be you have one for the child, the size of their mother's side, and the size of their father's side. Maybe swapped. Pause it and do it. Okay, nice job. You did, of course. You come along, came along and copied the template. Put that right there. Uh, renames this size. Copy and remember to rename those recursive calls. Okay, so I'm given if I'm given the unknown family tree, the size is zero. We already had that test case. Um, okay, suppose I'm given a child strut. Child name probably doesn't really come into the size. In fact, the year and eye color. Um, the child ma. What is the type of that ancestor tree? What is the type of size of child ma of tr? Ah, size. Good thing I provided you the signature. Size that returns a, nat a natural number. So we have this is a natural number, and we have this as a natural number. The size of the mother's side, the size of the father's side, already given to us. How do we put those together to get our result? Oh, we're just going to add them together. Oops, what happened to that? There we are. Um, the answer is going to be that's size of that plus the size of that. And we can try doing this. Uh, da, da, and we fail our test cases. Uh-oh. What's going on? Well, okay, define size twice. That's its own issue. Um, what's going on? I'd fail the test cases. I'd be correct for unknown. But Jackie would say, hey, the answer is supposed to be um, 1. It would give me 0. And I can sort of trace through why was jacking me. If I pass in this, why is it giving zero? I'm looking size of the child ma. Oh, size of unknown is zero, and size of the father is zero. Zero plus zero would be zero. Ah, but there's one more. There's Jackie herself. So there we are. Now we go ahead and have the the code that we want. Okay. Um, and we can make some more. I have some more test cases down here. Okay. And I think I went ahead and here's where I actually gave names to these. So I made to find Abe to be somebody, parents unknown, Mona, uh, make child of Homer, 1955 Brown, mother side, father side. And of course I could go ahead and say, since I have those variables, I could just go ahead and say Abe and Mona here. Um, oh, in fact, that's what I did here. <laughs> Make child Homer, 1955, Brown, and then my variable Mona, my variable Abe. So when I'm making these sample trees, yeah, going ahead and giving names to each sub one since I'm going to have quite a few sub trees overall. Okay, um, great. And now I can run, and now that I added that plus one, we'll see if we pass all these test cases here. And it says Jackie was already defined. Let's go ahead and Get rid of the version that I put in there. Do, do. Now we'll run and see if it really works. See if we can get to step eight of the design recipe. Um, we have check failures, but those are for a later function, change name. So we're good. Okay. So, um, da, da, da. if you, by the way, if you want to write the function unknown, Unknown can take in anything and says, hey, is this the unknown family tree? Okay. Um, so I could go ahead. One thing I could write is, hey, define unknown of x to be and of, it's a symbol, and symbol equal x unknown. Okay. Uh, I can't just say symbol equal by itself. I would have seen that. Why? If you pass in a string, symbol equal question mark will barf and say, whoa, I expected two symbols, and I'll compare them. You give me a string and tick unknown. So I need to short circuit with this and make sure it's a symbol. If it's not, unknown returns false. Um, okay, so, and do I want to go ahead and admit that there is this other function equal that actually works on all types? Yeah, you can do that. If you think about what the code for equal question mark looks like internally, it's probably a big, huge cond of a union type of all the known types. Uh -huh. And it calls symbol equal 
as a, if it's, hey, if I was given a symbol, call symbol equal. If I'm given a number, call equal. If I was given a string, call string equal. If I'm given two structs, call the struct equality function. Um, okay, so yeah, we can go ahead and and make that. Uh, you know, just looking at this uh, expression here, hey, give me x and then a call symbol on it, call symbol equal on it, uh, and the results. If you wanted, there is, uh, well, okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about the higher order functions. I haven't gotten there yet, that, there yet in the semester, so. Okay, here's what I want. I want a function change name. Uh, given an ancestor tree, I replace every one name with another. So what are some test cases here? Uh, hey, I might call change name. Here's a family tree. Inside this family tree, replace every Joseph with a Joey. Okay, well, unknown family tree Joseph doesn't occur at all. What if I have the uh, family tree for Jackie? Well, there's no Josephs there, so I should still get back the exact same family tree I put in. Um, what if I'm in the family tree for Jackie and I say, hey, replace every Jackie with Jack? Well, that I should give back a new family tree with Jack, born in 1926 with brown eyes and unknown parents. Okay. So, and I want to do this all the way through the entire tree. So, uh, if I have changed Joseph to Joey in this tree, okay, we'll go ahead and change the Joseph at the root. This is, we have Joseph here with parents... Amy and Joseph. Ah, Joseph's father is Joseph. I want to go ahead and replace that one to be jo Joseph as well. What about Amy? Amy, his mother, Amy. So this Joseph's grandparents, I guess, were another Joseph and a Joey. Again, this is sort of a test casing. Hey, make sure that my program leaves Joey alone. Um, okay, which it does. This Joseph gets changed to Joey and the other names all stay the same. Amy and that Joey. Okay, can you go ahead and write that function? Hint, it falls out from the template. Go ahead and pause and write that function. Okay, yeah, so, duh, 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 duh. let's go and grab that template. Copy. Go down here paste and let me keep that first first row there okay and I should go ahead and in my template change this the template not only that but I go ahead and probably if I think about it when I make the recursive call uh, I'm gonna go through and hey I have something of type ancestor tree. Think about the recursive call. On the mother's side, if I want to make a recursive call to change name on the mother's side, I'm trying to replace every Joseph with Joey, say. Hey, go to the mother's side, replace every Joseph with Joey in there, and give me that result. So, so this is of type ancestor tree. What is the type of this whole thing? Another ancestor tree, okay? So here I'm given, uh, when I start filling the code here, well, first of all, change name. If you give me the unknown family tree, uh, and I try to change all Joseph to Joey's, yeah, you still get back unknown. Okay. Uh, what about this here? Uh, now we're clearly going to have some sort of, yeah, I definitely want to use this piece of information. How will I want to use this piece of information? Ah, I want to do some sort of if statement. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. If string equal child name of tr to name one. Okay. How am I going to use that? I will remember. Let's go back. Look now at uh, one of my first test cases. Um, this one here, uh, change name of Jackie with Jackie to Jack. Oh, my answer is going to be a make child. And in fact, you know, all my answers were make child. 
if, if you didn't pass in the, an unknown family tree, every answer I gave back was always a make child. Except that, what was the name? Well, the name could have been the same or could have been changed. If it was equal to name one, use name two. Otherwise, use, oh, just keep the same name. So I'm gonna copy and paste that bit was in the template. Copy and paste what was already in the template because we're using it twice. Um, okay, so make a new child with a potentially different name. Same year of birth, same eye color. Oh, and you know, the mother side with everything changed and the father side with everything changed. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and let's see if we can run this. Get the things. TR is not a fine. My template copying failed here. Here I call it change name of Ank. TR is probably a better name. I think that will suffice. Okay. And I got an error, but that error is coming from all names, which we haven't written yet. Okay. Awesome. You're doing a great job. Uh, let's just look. we we'll do my typical thing here. Um, how much of this code was not already in the template? How much thinking did we have to do? We had to fill in the base case, one token here. Um, ah, we had to use make child to put together, to assemble our answer with a potentially different name at the, of that child. Okay, uh, two tokens, an if token. And the token had to do a string equal. This was all in the template, this was in the template well, okay, name one and name two, yeah, you have those around, obviously, as, well, and think of that as part of the template, if you like, when they have those as arguments. Uh, child name TR, that, 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 that. Ah, everything else. Four tokens. That's all we had to add to the template. Um, and again, this is where the power of this approach is starting to become pretty evident. Uh, if I just ask you to do this from scratch uh, in Java, yeah, you probably wouldn't reach working code, much less say, hey, I only had to think about four different tokens, so. Okay. Uh, so that was an example. Our first one was an example that takes in an ancestor tree, returns a number. Take in an ancestor tree, return a whole new ancestor tree. Okay. Um, great. What about, uh, just for fun, for kicks, take in an ancestor tree, return a list. So I'm going to go ahead and call this this all names. Return a list with all the names in a tree. Okay. So if you give me the unknown, you're, I'm going to get back the empty list. Um, if I get back, give me the tree Jackie. Well, I'm going to get back a list just containing Jackie. In fact, we can go ahead and use the list, the function list. Now that we've learned about that, uh, rather than cons, cons, cons for our test cases. Uh, okay, what about all names of Marge? I'm going to get back the list containing Jackie and Marge. Again, use that shorthand for constructing the list. Um, but you know, here's something like, what order should these names be in? Let's say, now you could say, hey, I want to do a pre-order traversal, and I think our code ends up doing a pre-order traversal. But let's just sort of say, hey, the correctness of the code just says, give me back a list of all the names in the tree. Duplicates still need to be in there, but they can be in any order. So my check expect is a little bit tough. I mean, again, think of me as writing a check expect for somebody else who's writing the actual code. So I don't know what order it's going to come in because I'm not even writing that code. And I'm just, I need to write the code before they, or the tests before they write that code. Gosh. Check, e uh, check expect is a little bit too strong. I'd say the answer will be exactly this list. So here's what I'll, here's you know a little hack around that or a little way to cope with that. Hey, the thing that I want to check is that uh, all the, when I call all names and sort the result, I get the same as this list where I've sorted the result. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that uh, throughout here. So now the question is, let's go ahead and write um, uh, write all names. This is the last one we'll do. Go ahead and pause, see if they take the template and write 
all names. And this will be a little bit tricky. There's there's something. But go ahead and start it, and then we'll uh, catch up. So go ahead and pop. OK. So we're going to go here. Do I still have that copy, paste, and that buffer? Probably not. No. Uh, why didn't I do this while you were paused? I don't know. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, all names. Okay, um, rename that to tr. Okay, uh, gosh, if we have uh, the empty tree, what are all the names in the empty tree? This, great, okay. Uh, let's look at this, we have the child name. That's gonna be certainly part of the result. Year of birth and eye color aren't going to play a role. How about all names of the mother's side? Yeah, so what is the type of that? Child ma of TR, that's a ancestor tree. What is the type of all names of child ma of TR? It's a list. I have one big long list of all the names off on the other side. And then I have all the names that are on the father's side. And my job is to make it one list with all the names in it, the mother's side and the father's side and the, the child themselves. So now again, here's where, since I've now introduced list, you're tempted to do something like uh, this. And I'm like, oh, like probably using list in your code is using this function list to create your test cases. Great. Not what you want here. Why not? This does not. If the mother side had 20 names and the father side had 10, I'm like, I should get a list with 20, 10, and 1, 31 names in it. Um, yeah, this gives you a list with three things in it, where the first thing is a string, and then the second two things are themselves lists. That's not what I want. I don't want a list containing lists. So don't use list here. So I could use cons. Cons one string onto, this is a list of string. Okay. So yeah, I can call cons of one string onto a list of string. That's great. But now, here's that little pickle that I mentioned. Uh, gosh, I have a list of strings and another list of strings, and I want to make a list that contains everything in both. I want to append these two lists. Huh. Two things. We can write the function append ourselves. It follows the design recipe. It falls right out. Second thing, there's an append built in. So we can go ahead and write append. Now, I'm a little bit, uh, as a teacher, I'm a little bit reluctant to mention that. Uh, well, it's out of the bag now. Uh, append, once I sh show append like the list constructor, people start using it, and maybe they shouldn't. Um, so. Uh, and if you can get, get by and use cons, you know, don't use append, use cons. Okay. Um, so for better or for worse, there is an append. It is built in. I do recommend as a good exercise, go and write your own append. Um, it follows from the list data definition. Okay. Now let's go ahead and run our test cases, see if that, and one of the test cases I think was all names of Bart, that tree Bart, and we get this list here, Bart, Marge, Jackie, Homer, Mon Mona, Abe. And again, for testing, I sorted it and so I knew exactly what the list should be. But yeah, those were all the, all the Simpsons we know that were in Bart's ancestor tree. Uh, Maggie and Lisa. Uh, yeah, they're sort of, again, not one of any of Bart's ancestors, so they're not in Bart's tree, but there's another tree for Lisa that looks just like this, except has Lisa instead of Bart in it. Okay, yeah, handling trees just follows from the recipe, same sort of steps that we did when handling lists, nothing that interesting. Um, I will finish off with a thought. Um, you might say, Barlin, this is kind of weird. You're wrapping up your list, your tree structure inside two of the fields of make child. That's your tree structure, those two recursive fields. And then you have the other sort of data fields, right? 
Um, and you know, it's a little bit nicer if you just said, hey, we have a, you know, like, hey, I have a list of strings. If I could have a tree of strings or a tree of childs, something like that. Yeah, that, that would be another approach and that is something you want to do in general. I will say that first of all, the child structure really does. There are two fields. The mother and the father is a field of the child. So I'm going to, I like wrapping it in that way. And second of all, when we're dealing with parse trees, so that's where we're heading. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and have a parse tree where some nodes have five children, some nodes have three, and all the fields they have are kind of different. Every node of the tree has different potential fields in it, and the number of children might be different. Here it was exactly two because we had a ma and a pa, um, but it will be different when we deal with parse trees. If you're curious about more functions you can write, in the bottom of this file is uh, several more uh, functions that you can write yourself if you like. Uh, contains, kind of interesting to write it here. It follows easily, but you can also say, gosh, what if I want to short circuit? Um, okay. And there's some other things you can do to hone your practice. Send email, uh, if you have questions about it, post on the discussion board. And there's some fancy ones. I think I have an entitle in here, which was, you have to be a little bit clever to come up with a way uh, to uh, do that function. If you look at it, you'll, you look at the, th the, the function, it looks as, hey, I want to access the parent of this node. Like I, I'm given something like uh, Marge, and given that tree based at Marge and all of her ancestors, I somehow want to go down and grab Bart and, and do something there. And you can't, you're not given that information. Um, and so, yeah, I have a little helper function that helps figure out the, one way we can approach that and still stay within the template of the design recipe. Okay, awesome. Long video, maybe I'll edit, try to split it up a little bit, but uh, good job. The next unit is gonna be the exact same family trees, but in Java, using this exact same approach with the template. And in particular, what's gonna be new is how to get a union type in Java. Okay, I'll see you then.